So Lauren Rose and Mandy Ganell, and we're going to talk to you guys a little bit about our tools and um, personalized learning. We listened to Dr. McCullough's speech, uh, the welcoming speech, and he talked about um, learning driving the bus and about student evaluations being the measurement of success. And those are really at the core of um, what we do, both with iClicker and with IntelliS Learning. So our tools are, and it looks like there's a pop-up up there too. <laughs> Our tools um, personalize learning in a few different ways. So with iClicker, it's really about helping instructors personalize their learning in the classroom. So um, you can see that you get real-time feedback from your students. Um, you can figure out if they are able to understand the content, if they're engaged in the course, if they're in your class. You can do attendance with um, iClickers. And with IntelliS, really it's a, um, an OER tool but the data that I'm going to show you in the presentation today is what will help you figure out sort of where the knowledge gaps are in your course. Um, it'll help you understand if your students are engaging in the content that you're providing them, how they're engaging in that content, um, so on and so forth. And I know we're going to ask you a question to use your clickers, too, so I can talk to you about what the question is, because you guys will kind of get 30 seconds to talk amongst yourselves. So um, we're interested in in your efforts over the next 12 months in terms of personalized learning, what, uh, what are sort of, what's most important to you? Is it most important that it's affordable? Um, is the student success most important? Or is the course quality um, slash content most important? So it's, it's kind of a tough one to answer and you guys get to do it as a group. Um, but think about that maybe for 30 seconds, kind of talk to your tables, affordability, course quality and content, or student success. And then hopefully we'll get this up and running and you can answer and buzz in for us. All right, there we go. So A is affordability, B is student success, and then C is course quality and improvement. I know. <laughs> I do want all the above. <laughs> That's in TELUS maybe. That's what we'll talk to you about. <laughs> it's a tough one. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of run things from over here for now. Um, but so we can pull up the results chart here and get immediate feedback from our audience, right? So it looks like student success is most important to everybody. And let's just pretend for a second that there's a right answer to this, okay? And say you were using this in your classroom. Let's say that the right answer was actually A. So we might have a problem here, right? <clears throat> Maybe the students didn't quite understand that concept. So this gives you the chance to adapt your lecture a little bit and maybe reteach that concept. So it gives you the ability to see how you're doing during lecture, to see, get that immediate feedback and engagement from students. It also shows your students, hey, good, I'm not the only one who didn't understand that question. Maybe it's okay to raise my hand and, and, um, and ask a question now about it. And then by me uh, selecting the correct answer here, we're doing everything on the fly. It, the student grades get sent directly to the grade book and then up into the LMS if you want it. So they can get points for just participating, being awake, showing up to your class, um, for correct answers if you want it to be that way, and attendance, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Okay, so, so back to Lauren. Yeah, so some of you guys asked where D is. Um, potentially that's what IntelliS Learning does. So I wanna kinda talk to you guys a little bit about that now. Um, We'll skip that question for time's sake. So IntelliS Learning, uh, at the core, it, it's really a tool. It's a uh, platform as service company. Um, but what it does is it helps faculty or and or instructional designers find, evaluate, and adopt content. And that content spans its OER. Um, it is library resources and institutional resources that your, your institution has already paid tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars to invest in, um, EBSCO, JSCOR, any of those kinds of sites. And then it also can work with commercial content. So um, the, the tool will help really crawl all of that content and then index it in a really easy way for instructors or instructional designers to create courses or use the learning objects in their courses. Um, and, and something that's really unique is that is the data that we get. So it's really um, timely, granular, actionable data. It's data that can help you as instructors figure out, like I talked about before, sort of where the gaps are in the course content, 
um, or in the learning and, and help you kind of customize your course content or your lecture for the students. So I can definitely talk to you guys about affordability, student success, and course quality because those are our big three um, you know, focuses with Intellis. But since we're here for personalized learning, I, I kind of um, am going to talk about the reports only in this presentation just so that you guys can understand how you might be able to use Intellis for personalized learning and then come talk to me more later if you'd like. Um, so really quickly, this one is a report that you can see in Intellis, and instead of students going out to Google and searching something, they can search in the Intellis tool, which is in your LMS if you'd like it to be, um, and you can see as an instructor what they're searching for. So right now I can see I had 15 students search for economic development. Maybe I didn't cover that well in class, or maybe you know the book is, has some gaps in, in how it produces that content. So I want to spend some time on it, or I want to give them some additional material on it. Um, so that's a way that you can kind of adapt your materials. Um, here, is, here are reports around student engagement uh, based on type and source and learning objectives. So you can see, you know, most of my students are engaging in videos, but not the ebook as much. Um, most are engaging in whatever OER content I've published in this course, but the publisher content, they're, you know, engaging in least and, and make some determinations around why that might be and, and what you might want to do to tweak your course moving forward. Um, these are a couple other reports. This is engagement based on learning objective. So it's kind of hard to read, but like the, the least engaged topic, um, you can see it's input markets. So why is that? Is that a really boring topic? Do I need to find something more engaging? Is that a tough topic? Um, and then you can also see by resource. So you can see, you know, which videos are um, being viewed most or which ebook sources are being viewed most. And, and all this data is to kind of help inform decisions on creating courses. Um, and then it gets granular, so you can see it by a student as well. So you can go in and see, you know, which student is engaging in what content, how long are they engaging for, when did they last log in, and kind of make some um, adjustments based on a student-by-student -student basis. And the chart just shows, like, how, when are they engaging at what point in the week, and that kind of helps you see that. So all kinds of powerful reporting on... Um, learning objects on content that your students are engaging in. And if you have any other questions about it, definitely come see me and I'd love to talk to you guys. And then we'll talk about Clicker to wrap it up. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. So as Lauren mentioned, we are um, kind of separate here, but just wanted to show you that they can, and it really can be integrated, iClickers can be integrated with, with anything. So Educause put out an article, um, Six Ways to Support Personalized Learning, and I think both Intellis and Student response systems can fall into a lot of these categories. So um, Mark McAllister told me yesterday, everybody knows what a clicker is. And he's right. I mean, it's a tried and true technology that's been around for, for quite some time. Um, but the invention of the, the mobile apps is something that is making student response systems even more robust these days. Um, so iClicker is what you had at your table. We also have an app called Reef Polling by iClicker where students can use their phones, tablets, laptops, um, and or a clicker. So we could have had a room if we had time to get you guys all on your phones and to, to be able to download the app. Um, we could have a mixed room with phones, tablets, laptops, and clickers if you wanted it to be that way. So um, the kind of cool thing about uh, Reef is, well, let's talk about this first. So as I mentioned, it can work with anything. We're content agnostic. So um, open educational resources, um, publishing content, and the Reef toolbar hovers, or even, uh, sorry, back up, Dr. Nudson, where, where's he at? Is he still in here? His, his uh, math calculus program that he talked about yesterday, right? So it could work with that as well, because the toolbar that you see down there in the bottom left corner just ho hovers over any application that you're teaching with. So we had a PowerPoint that we were using, but um, Dr. Nudson's calculus, he could bring up some questions there that students were struggling with. Uh, during the online homework session, he could bring those up in class and ask some questions about that and get student engagement right away and to get that immediate feedback from his students. So um, the, the cool thing that Reef offers that the clicker doesn't is when we ask the question on the PowerPoint, it would have taken a screenshot if you were on the app and sent it directly to uh, your device. So it's essentially compiling a study guide throughout class for students to be able to um, steer their learning you know, go home when it's time to study for the midterm. They can go back and see the questions that were asked in class, what their answer was, 
what the correct answer was. If the instructor maybe drew on the slide to give a hint, they could send that, that screenshot to the student's device as well, and they would see that hint and remember, oh yeah, that's, that's how we do that concept in class. It also gives students immediate uh, ability to see their attendance, to see their performance, and to really be in charge of their learning. And then we have more robust features as well. For example, this one is a um, target question. So the instructor can send out an image, any image. You could go to Google Images and pull up an um, image of a mitochondria, say, for example, in biology, and that you might want um, students to pinpoint a certain spot on that image. And then it comes back in the form of a heat map for the instructor so they can see what the students chose. And obviously, Missouri was the correct answer on this one. And then we have this uh, reef attendance. So this is a pretty cool feature. It uses geolocation to track that the student is actually in the classroom. Um, <laughs> so you get to choose on the map where your, where your classroom is and um, say they have to be within 100 feet or something like that. And if they're at the coffee shop down the street, they're not going to be able to check in. Um, and this is something that can be implemented university-wide if um, I know there are some initiatives for attendance that need to happen. And then, of course, an integral part of uh, personalized learning is analytics, and we do offer that um, based on, you can see, um, the administrators can see who's really using um, student engagement in a, in a good pedagogical way and maybe pair those with people who need a little assistance, but also to be able to see students, see um, how students are doing in class, what kind, how often they're showing up, et cetera. <coughs> All right, that was our 10 minutes plus a few um, dropped <laughs> things and microphone issues. Any questions? <laughs> is Reef sold separately in addition or is it bundled in when you buy clickers? How's that work? So you have a couple of options. Um, the question was they have iClickers, is Reef, is Reef bundled in? So um, a lot of times the bookstore or the instructor can choose for the students to purchase a clicker and a um, Reef subscription. So what happens with that is the student who's using their clicker, they still get all of that good data. They get to see the screenshots, what they chose with their clicker, et cetera. Um, if they want just the app, they can do that as well um, for a per semester subscription, free, subscription fee. It's significantly cheaper than the clicker itself. Okay, thank you. Thanks.